In this video, we'll look at some of the ways you can customize Squid 3. As usual, we begin by generating our Squid project file, importing the data, defining the reference materials, and assigning the models. But this time, instead of using the preloaded Squid task, we are going to uh, load a Squid 2.5 task. And in doing this, uh, we're going to have to edit it, and so you will need to harness the power of the expression manager. So in this video, we'll dip our toes into that functionality. We'll start by browsing to the folder that contains our old Squid 2.5 tasks. My default folder here is the correct one, but you can see that within the Windows environment, there are no tasks listed. This is a little quirk of the Windows environment that we're working on, but for now, as long as you're sure you've browsed to the correct folder, you can select it, and once you do, you'll see that your list of Squid 2.5 tasks, and you can select one. So this is our usual task at the Geological Survey of Canada. There are 11 peaks. We analyze hafnium and ytterbium, so we can get a little extra trace element information for our unknowns. Because of these two extra species, we have a few extra ratios and a few extra expressions that we need to treat the data. The ratios are recognized and listed here, and the custom calculations are recognized and listed here uh, as well. So once we are happy that we've got the right task, we can say use to replace the current task. Through the magic of editing, I'm making that look almost instantaneous. It will take a few moments uh, for your edited task to be recognized, and same with a number of the other steps here. So uh, don't be alarmed if things seem to take a little bit longer. So once uh, we're in the task manager, as ever, we can see we have these red X's here for our directives. So we need to go to isotopes, map isotopes from data to task here to sync up those labels. And so once we've done that, if we go back to the task, we can see we have our green check marks. Now we'll move on to the expression manager. And we'll begin with just a general tour. Squid tasks for geochronology, be they 2.5 or Squid 3, contain four main types of data. And these types of data are visible and available to you through the accordion windows at the left. The raw counts for each species are available here under isotopes. The background corrected ratios that we ask for in the tasks are given here. And then there are two sets of equations that are used for geochronology. These are the built-in expressions and the numeric switched expressions that faithfully replicate replicate Ludwig's algorithms in Squid 2.5. Finally, there are the custom expressions, which were the user-defined equations in Squid 2.5. If you select an expression, it is shown in a text format in the top part of this window, and then as a typeset image for easier readability in the middle. The output of the expression is shown in the peak window below. Some expressions are used for unknowns only, some are for reference materials only, and some get used for both. Accordingly, in the peak window, the outputs for reference materials and unknowns are on separate tabs. If the expression isn't applied to that class of analysis, you get this message. You can tell at a glance what the target of a given expression is by the little superscript at the start of the expression name. R is for reference materials, U is for unknowns, RU for both. If you're trying to find a specific expression, you can sort the list by using these dialog buttons at the top, either sorting them by name, by order of execution, or by target, meaning is it is the target a reference material or an unknown or both or the concentration reference material. In the four expressions that I showed you, isotopes, ratios, built-in expressions, and numeric switched expressions, all these expressions are fixed. They are not editable. However, you can make your own expressions and these are found under custom expressions. 
any of the general equations that you had in SQUID 2.5, in the SQUID 2.5 task that you loaded, will be housed here and they can be edited. I'll start by just building a couple of simple test expressions to show you how this works. So you'll start by creating new, giving the expression a name, and selecting what is the target uh, for this expression. So we'll do reference materials and unknowns. It could also be for concentration reference materials. So to build an expression, there are a number of different ways of doing it. One in the default setting is the drag and drop. So to do that, you can take a ratio from uh, your accordion list or an expression from your accordion list at the left and drag it in. You can ask also drag in uh, constants or operators. So here we'll multiply that by 638. Another way to edit uh, expressions are as text. So you use this orange button at the far right here to switch between drag and drop, D&D, &D, and text. So now if we want to edit as text, we can then uh, use the keyboard to put in other things. So I'm now going to divide by two. Uh, if we want to edit as drag and drop and we realize we've put uh, an incorrect argument in here, we can replace it by selecting the replace dialog button and selecting the operator that you're interested in, dragging it over and it will highlight the item shown in red. So once you're happy with your expression, you can save it and it will show up in your list of custom expressions. If you uh, decide you don't need it, you can right click on it to remove it. Before we do that, I'll just show as soon as you save the expression, the output for it appears in the peak window below. So you need to save the expression before you can see the peak. So here you can verify that the expression is doing what you think it's doing. And because this was an expression directed at both reference materials and unknowns, there are values in both tabs. So I don't need this expression, so I'm going to remove it. Expressions can be individually calculated for each spot, like in the example I just gave, or it can be a summary calculation. So here is our test summary. We're going to do this on uh, a summary calculation on an unknown sample, and specifically sample 1242. And um, the expression, the summary expression I'd like to do, so I want to return a single value, so that's what we mean by a summary expression. So that will be an average of, let's say, the, um, let's do a numeric switched expression. Well, let's just call it the line uranium oxide over uranium, so we'll uh, drag and replace that in the expression right here. We'll also want to flag that this is a summary calculation using that checkbox there. And once that's complete, we can save that expression. And again, we'll see there is uh, the value output in the peak expression. We now have an extra tab, which is this spots. So it shows us what values are included uh, in that summary expression. Now, again, this is a, uh, just a test, so I will remove it here. You can see now I've already uh, removed one expression. Expression Manager remembers that I can uh, restore it if I decided I wanted to, but I don't, so I'm just going to remove. When you import your SQUID 2.5 task, you might end up with some expressions that are classified as unhealthy. These are expressions that don't work because there's something about the format of the SQUID 2.5 expression that SQUID 3 does not recognize. And these unhealthy expressions need to be rationalized. In the case of the old SQUID 2.5 task that I imported, I know that a number of these expressions refer to named cells in Excel. This obviously doesn't carry over here, so I will multi-select these by holding down Shift and click and removing them. And now I still have other unhealthy expressions here, and I can get a clue about what the problem is 
uh, by looking at um, the typeset image here. So it tells me I have a missing expression in the in the first position in this in this. Uh, in this operator in the by weight, so it can't find an expression named 207 lead star, 206 lead star. Um, and also in the audit, there you might be able to find some clues about what the problem is with these expressions. In this case, I know that I don't need both of these expressions, so I'm going to remove them as well. After you clean up the unhealthy expressions, either by deleting them or making them healthy, you should verify that all your other custom expressions are doing what you intend, because some of the flags, particularly as they relate to summary calculations or calculations specific to a particular sample, might not carry over properly from SQUID 2.5, exactly as intended. Also, you should know that there are tools within Expression Manager that allow us to calculate values and errors in a single expression. So it's possible to streamline your list of custom expressions. This is an example here, um, a single expression that calculates both a value and its error is known as a value model, which here you can see outputs the value, it's one sigma absolute and one sigma percent in a single, um, in a single expression. So if you regularly use the same custom expressions in a number of different tasks, you can carefully clean up one version of them, and then you can export the set of those cleaned up expressions to a folder. I had already done that for this particular SQUID 2.5 task. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete uh, the original batch of custom expressions and import a new set of cleaned up ones here, import custom expressions from folders. Again, I'll select the folder. Again, because of that little quirk in Windows, the expressions aren't shown here, but if you're confident you have the right one, when you select folder, they will uh, be populated into your custom expressions. And again, this will take a moment. So once you've cleaned up your custom expressions, your earlier SQUID 2.5 task is now a fully developed SQUID 3 task. So you can go back to uh, view the current task and save it as a squid task .xml file so it's available to you um, for future use. So I'll put that in my custom library and save it here and I will replace. Returning to the primary goal of this video, which was about alternate ways of creating or customizing tasks, Another approach is to edit a pre-existing SQUID 3 task, for example, one from the library. Let's use the same data file, but this time imagine that I added hafnium and ytterbium on a whim, and that I'd never reduced such data using SQUID 2.5, so I didn't have an existing task. In that case, I could start with uh, a task from the library. So we'll call it the, uh, the Nine Peak task and I would edit that one. Here in the task editor, I can add the masses of interest. So that would be uh, 190, uh, 190 as well as 196.1. Oh, I have to separate those by comma. Add them here. The other thing I need to do is identify my background peak, which is uh, highlighted in green because these two masses were added uh, before it. Um, I just need to move that forward. So my background peak I do using this clicker tool here is 204.1. I can also add ratios, which I do use in this button here, add ratios. So I want to do a 190 over 196 ratio as well as a 196.1 over 196. So I've added my ratios. So now I can use that to replace my current task. As ever, because I added a couple of extra isotopes, I'll need to go here and uh, map my task labels to my data labels. And from there, I can go to the expression manager 
and build the extra custom expressions I need to deal with this, uh, these two new isotopes uh, that I've added to my run table. Because of the instant feedback of the output of expressions in the peak window, things that would be very tedious in Squid 2.5 are far more accessible. With Squid 2.5, we might have hesitated to try something new on the instrument because reducing a new format of data was such a hassle. With Squid 3, you can make changes to your analytical run table on the fly because the barrier to reducing that new type of data is so much lower. Stay tuned for workshop discussions and possibly future videos where we delve into greater detail and depth on the expression manager. But in the meantime, I encourage you to explore the functionality of it and to become familiar with some of the basics. This video really has only touched the surface of what it can do.